these natural, the natural part of you. You have, to, you have to make it serve God. Paul said, I keep under my body. That's what he's talking about. Therefore, now John said about the appearing of the Lord, 1 John 3, 3, he had just said that, that uh, when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him, meaning in Christ. not He does have the hope in here, but that's not the meaning of the text. Every man has this hope in him, purifies himself, even as he is pure. How many do that? Every, every person that has this hope. I said every person that has this hope in him purifies himself even as he is pure. So when you find someone that sin's always erupting, they don't have hope. That's what the problem is. They're not hoping. They're unsure. I can understand why they don't, because this is like a very rare subject that you hear a priest on, the coming of the Lord. There's different, different positions about it. They argue, they argue like the amillennial, premillennial, postmillennial, preterist, but not a single one of those are about the coming of the Lord. Amen. None of them, the coming of the Lord is not the center point of any one of them. Those positions are the problem. In the scripture, the coming of the Lord is the point. That's the point. And everyone that knows it gets to work on this project that we're, that we're talking about. Mortify. Mortify means put to death. Some verses say consider dead. You must kill these things, the New Jerusalem Bible says. Make it dead, put it to death. Now here's the, catch one good brother has commented on this already. In the scriptures when it talks about putting to death, the mode is crucifixion. We're not talking about decapitation or hanging. This is a slow and progressive death. By intention, it's that way. Now you see a perfect parallel of this uh, in Israel's journey to, to Canaan. As you know, when they figured out that the first time they sent out the spies, they, uh, they had a majority vote and them decided they shouldn't go in. It was, the land was everything God said it was, but you was going to have to fight. To, <laughs> you was going to have to fight to take it. There were enemies in the land. They forgot that God said you're going to inhabit houses you didn't build and vineyards you didn't plant. And see, they forgot all that. And so they backed off. And so God took them in a circuitous route to the wilderness until all those people about 600,000 of them, all those people died in the wilderness. Now, God has left us in this situation, in salvation. He hasn't left us. In the, currently, we're in this situation where our biggest enemy is inside us, in our body. He's, a, he's not an invited guest. We haven't asked him to stay. But by intention, he's there. Why is he there? God's weeding out the people that don't really have it. Sometimes they'll believe, as Luke 8, 13 says, they believe for a while. I dedicate that to all eternal securities. They believe for a while. But it's the tri in time of trial or temptation, one gospel says, they fall away. See, if you do not do what this text says. Mortify or put to death the members, your members that are upon the earth. They will disqualify you. You will be excluded. Now make no mistake about it. The next verse tells you that. They will disqualify. Once you know this, coupled with the coming of the Lord, who's going to expose everything. <laughs> you can hide it now. But it's going to be fully exposed then. It makes perfect sense. To engage in this hearty effort. Now it's by crucifixion. Knowing our old man is crucified with him. Romans 6.6. 6, that's when you were baptized. See, Paul is the only one that gave us some extended dialogue about what happened when you're baptized. Did you know that? Nobody else did. That told these, what actually happened when you were baptized? What happened was that God did the initial crucifixion for you. 
He crucified the part of you that can't get in. Flesh and blood can't get in. He crucified it. And it's like the thief, impenitent thief on the cross. He didn't like being up there. The impenitent thief said, if you really are who you say you are, save yourself and us. Let me off this cross. That's what this members that are upon the earth, which is a detailed view of your old man, which is a detail, which is another acronym for your natural part. What, we, what you're, what's traced back to Adam? See, nothing from Adam's getting into heaven. Not one single thing. Adam's been written off. There now is a second man. Huh? And the last Adam, he's starting a new generation. So Adam's out. Now during this age of salvation, since God's not looking for a reason to condemn people, which he is not, God's not looking for a reason to condemn anybody. He's looking for a reason to save people, not condemn them. So in this age of salvation, he allows us to live with this sort of dichotomy, two warring parts against each other. And he tells us, you got to crucify the one part. Don't, he can talk. But I tell you, that thief couldn't steal anything while he's on the cross. And your old nature can't either. And you keep him crucified. How about this? Paul said, I am crucified. See? Telling you that this death is by crucifixion. This isn't something you do tomorrow and then you're done with it. And that's, no, you'll get up tomorrow and you're going to have to face this whole thing again. He said, uh, Galatians 5, 24, they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh together with its affections and lusts. See, well, what about the people that haven't crucified? They're not Christ's. Yeah, well, they've been going, they got the, when I was young, we used to get a, a little bar for being a perfect attendance, and some people had it like stretched out halfway down their leg. They had these bars, perfect attendance. But I never remember that they were always holy people. I don't, that, that you were more struck in by the bars than you were the holiness. But they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh. They pinioned it, they've restricted it. They've taken away its advantages. The things that it liked that it could get hold of, they, they didn't set the table with that stuff on it. Now everybody in a sense is different here. Everybody has sins and weights that so easily beset them. They're like, maybe it has to do with how you how your past life. If you were a murderer and a thief, well, you, you probably don't go, you were a thief, you, you shop as little as you can. You don't, you don't give this part of your nature that, that had proved your undoing, you don't give it an advantage. Amen. If you're an old-time rock and roller that, with these old crazy people, and, and this is where your life was, listen, don't convert your music, to Christian music, to rock and roll. Amen. That was what caused the people to fall in the first place. It was a member that was upon the earth. See, a lot of people don't know this. I still remember a brother, and he's here, but I won't name his name. He didn't have any kind of recording disc player or anything like that in his house because this was his undoing in his former life. And so until he was stable in that aspect of his life, he just, he mortified, he crucified that. He didn't have anything to do with it. And he survived it, and, and he doesn't have to do that now. But I have things like that myself, things that were, I was vulnerable, so you mortify your members there upon the earth. Here's another, God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified to me, and I to the world. That's the world. They, they, want, they want you on the cross. <laughs> now speaking metaphorically, mortifying the deeds of the body, is keeping the old man who is the repository for all personal iniquity. The old man's like a bucket that Satan pours things into. And if you, if you yield to him, he'll spill it out in your life and it'll overflow into all kind of sin. Now understand that the power of God brings the power to obey divine directives. Whatever God requires of you comes with power to do it. Now, Jesus demonstrated this in his miracles.